Raise Reviews, welcome back. You know one of my favorite things to review on the channel is camera lenses. They're all unique. They all have their own specific look to them, don't they? And today we're going to be checking out the Panasonic 25mm 1.7. And to keep you out of suspense, I'm going to let you know you're actually looking through it right now. It's at f2 and it can give you an idea of how you can blur the background. I had the lens for months. I know it inside and out. So in this video, we're going to look at its pros, its cons, and how to use it to the best of its ability. If you're curious about it at all, stick around. I'm about to put it through the ringer. Stay tuned. First things first, let's look at the specs. At 25mm, it's the 50mm equivalent of full frame, making it neither a wide angle or telephoto. They call this a standard lens because if given the choice of only carrying one, this is the length most photographers would use because of its versatility. And at f1.7 aperture, it's not only very good in low light, but it's also going to give a good separation from the background at closer ranges. It comes with a metal mount, but as you would expect from a budget lens, it's made of all plastic. One of the things I like most about the lens is the way the manual focusing ring moves. It feels almost as if it's an old school lens because it's well damped and smooth. But more about the manual focusing later in the video. The sunshade snaps on tight and it can also be reversed to save space, which is a good thing. But the coatings on the lens are so good at reducing flare, you could almost do without it. You know, when I first got this lens, I didn't know what to make of it. It wasn't wide enough to use in tight spaces and it wasn't long enough to reach things in the distance. And as good as the image quality was, it just felt like an awkward focal length. So it just sat in my bag looking pretty. But then I remembered something one of my favorite photographers, Mr. Oz Yilmaz said. If you want to be a great photographer, you need to master all focal length, especially the ones you're least comfortable with. So I went to downtown Miami, but I only took this one lens. I was determined to find its purpose. Walking the city streets, though, it didn't take me long to realize what this lens is best at. Capturing people in their daily lives. Because it's not so tight that you can't tell where your subject is, and it's not so wide that they're lost in the environment. What this lens I found is perfect for is street photography. There's really only one fault I could find with this lens and in my opinion it's pretty big. It's the way the lens responds to the manual focusing ring. If you turn the ring for example half a turn slowly, almost nothing happens and you probably won't reach your focal point. But if you turn the ring the same distance half a turn fast, the focusing speed accelerates and you're most likely going to overshoot your focus point, meaning you have to turn it back and forth a few times until you're finally focused. To be more specific, the focus point changes based on how fast you turn the ring. On an old lens, you have a distance ring with numbers and you can count on it to be accurate. You don't even have to look through the viewfinder. This isn't a serious problem if you're just using it for still images, but if like me you shoot a lot of video where manual focusing is a necessity, the inaccuracy of this lens could be a deal breaker. I know it's not just because it's a fly-by-wire system because, as you can see with my Sigma 19mm, the focusing is immediate and responsive and accurate to the movements of my finger. This issue may not matter so much with many young photographers, but for someone like me who grew up in the 80s shooting film cameras and does a lot of manual focusing, this one issue makes this lens a disappointment. Another thing that makes this lens not perfectly suited for video is that it doesn't have inbuilt stabilization. With the kit lens stabilization, you can do panning shots smoothly and make them look almost like they're on a tripod. With this, it's very difficult to shoot steady video, and I recommend some kind of stabilization system or tripod to get the most professional video shots. To get the most out of this lens, I recommend using a modern camera. A lens like this, you're going to want to shoot wide open for that special look. The problem is with older cameras like my GH1, 
its shutter speed tops out at one four thousandth of a second. So that means in daylight, I'm almost always overexposed and I have to use an ND filter, which tends to deteriorate the image quality. My G7, on the other hand, has an electronic shutter that kicks in at that range and goes up to one sixteen thousandths of a second, which means I'm rarely overexposed and I can leave the ND filter at home. Also, the G7 is good because even at 2500 ISO in the low light, it still can have beautifully clean images with no noise. My old GH1, on the other hand, at that range, there would be so much banding, it would look as though I'm shooting through a wedding veil. So with this particular lens, it's always good if you can have a modern camera to maximize what it's capable of. I gotta give credit to this lens. It helped me overcome my fear of street photography and also show the importance of getting out of my comfort zone and learning to use different focal lengths in different situations. All right, so that's it. Really goes to show this lens is very capable in the right hands. Hope you learned something about it. And my main point with this video, I want you to realize you don't need to spend $1,200 on a lens to get great images. You could take this quality but budget lens right here and you can run with someone who has an $8,000 Leica kit and wind up with a better image if you know what you're doing. So that's the purpose of this video, just showing you that use your creativity, learn the photography craft and as you improve, you'll learn what's best for you and, and what's not. Matter of fact, this camera, this GH1 is from 2009. It's an old camera, but some of my most favorite images were taken with it. And I can't duplicate them with my new G7 for whatever reason. So um, maybe that says something. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Till next time, keep it real. You know, like any lens, the creativity of it doesn't really depend on the hardware. It depends on you or me, the one behind the camera. So hopefully you... Uh, Oh. <laughs> oh, you know what I'm trying to say.